Hi, welcome to Organic Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk more about organic functional groups. Specifically, we're going to look at the alcohols. So, introduction to organic alcohols, differentiating between organic alcohols and hydroxides, which is a really important thing to know how to do, naming organic alcohols, and finally some examples at the end. Let's start talking about alcohol. This specific screenshot right here is from table R of your reference tables. So you should have table R out right now and be able to see this right underneath the halides. Alcohols or organic compounds in which one or more hydrogen atoms of a hydrocarbon are replaced by an OH group. The OH group is called a hydroxyl group and is the functional group that gives alcohols their specific chemical and physical properties. Differentiating between hydroxide and hydroxyl groups. The difference between a hydroxide, OH-1, and the hydroxyl group, dash OH, is very specific and should not be confused. The hydroxide ion, OH-1, is a polyatomic ion found on table E of your reference tables that may form an ionic bond with a positive ion, such as a metal ion or ammonium. So for example, we could have a lithium ion, Li plus one, and bring that together with our hydroxide ion, OH minus one, to make lithium hydroxide, Li O. H. In a hydroxyl group, dash OH, the oxygen is covalently bonded to a carbon atom in the parent chain. So this bond right here is a covalent bond where the carbon and the oxygen are sharing a pair of electrons. There's not a big enough difference in electronegativity values between the carbon and the oxygen for the OH to be completely released and become an ion. Therefore, it is an alcohol group. So what you're looking for is this OH bonded to a carbon, and you know that is an alcohol group. Naming alcohols. Alcohols are named by replacing the final E for the corresponding alkane name and adding the suffix OL. So drop the E, add an OL. Now again, could we do this with alkenes and alkynes? Yes, we could, but for the sake of this course, we're gonna focus on alkanes. When necessary, a number tells which carbon on the parent chain the hydroxyl group is attached. Now before we go into a bunch of examples, let's just remind ourselves of the behavior of alcohols in water. Alcohols do not ionize, in other words, break into ions in water. Therefore, alcohols are not electrolytes. They're not going to conduct electricity because they're not going to form ions. Electricity will not conduct through alcohols because there are no free ions in the aqueous solution. In other words, mixing pure alcohol and water. So we have two examples, sodium hydroxide and methanol, which again, we'll learn how to name in a second. If I put sodium hydroxide into water, I would get two ions, Na plus one, Aq plus OH minus one, Aq. I'd form two ions, these are charged particles, and yes, this solution would definitely conduct electricity. But if I put methanol in water, CH3OH, it would still be CH3OH, aqueous. Those molecules are not going to break down into ions because they're all covalently bonded together. A solution of methanol in water is not going to conduct electricity like if you put sodium hydroxide in water and formed mobile ions. Let's talk about how to name organic alcohols. Let's start with methanol. Meth, we know, is going to be one carbon. AN, all single bonds, but yet again, it's methanol, so we're only gonna have four bonds and we're not going to attach it to any other carbons. I have an OL group, which says an alcohol. When I draw these alcohols, I'm going to just put OH. 
So a condensed structural formula. Could I put a dash between the O and the H? Yes, but historically I haven't done that, so I'm not going to start now. The rest of the bonds I am going to fill in with hydrogens. And the condensed structural formula for this would be CH3OH. And there we have methanol. Now let's do ethanol. So again, we have F, 1, 2, AN, meaning it's a single bond between the two carbons, and then OL saying, hey, you have an alcohol here. So again, I'm going to put the alcohol right off the end here. I have lines representing the four bonds that each carbon can have, and then I'm going to fill each bond in with a hydrogen. Now, could I put that OH group any other spot on that group? Yeah, I could. I could put it on the top. I could put it on the bottom. I could put it on the opposite end. Anywhere is fine. I'm just putting it at the end because it's going to make it easier when I do my condensed structural formula. So when I write this out, I'm going to write C H three C H two O H. And it's that O H on the end that indicates, hello, you have an alcohol present. Yeah. Let's do two propanol. So I'm going to start with prop. That means three carbons. One, two, three. AN indicates my single bonds between those carbons. And then an OL saying, hello, you have an alcohol here. But now I have a number, which means I really should go in and number my carbons. So one, two, three. So that means off of the second carbon, I'm going to have an alcohol group. So I'm going to put a line up here in OH. And then the rest of my bonds that are coming off these carbons are going to just be single bonds bonded to a hydrogen. So what would my condensed structural formula look like? I'm going to start from left to right. So I'm going to start with my first carbon, CH3. And then my next carbon has the OH on it. So I'm going to write, okay, this is my second carbon. I'm going to put the hydrogen, single hydrogen, that's coming off of that carbon. Then I'm going to put my OH group. Could I put this in parentheses? Sure. I could. If you really wanted to put it in parentheses to indicate like, hello, I'm an organic alcohol, sure, you can do that or you can leave it without. And then finally, the last carbon, CH3. So CH3, CH, OH, CH3. That would represent two propanol. Let's do three pentanol. So pent means five carbons. One, two, three, four, five, single bonds between all the carbons. And yes, we're going to have an alcohol group and it's going to come off the third carbon. I'm not going to number the carbons this time. We can just count one, two, three. It's going to come off the very center. Here's my OH group representing. And then I'm going to put bonds and hydrogens around the remaining carbons. When I write the condensed structural formula here, I'm going to start from the left going to the right. So it's going to be C H three C H two C H. I am going to put that O H in parentheses to indicate that is an alcohol C H two C H three. And that condensed structural formula represents three pentanol. So what did you learn? I introduced the idea of organic alcohols. We differentiated between organic alcohols and hydroxides, and we'll work on that more with examples in class. Naming organic alcohols and then examples at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.